what about your people over the, in Papua and all that? I mean, it wasn't quite clear from... <laughs> What wasn't quite clear from the clip, for those who haven't seen it, the, their island was beginning to get submerged because of global warming. So the plan was is to ship them to the mainland, as it were. So how did you get involved in that one? In, uh, in 2008, I came across a humanitarian alert about the Carteret Islands. Um, they're being, because of global warming and rising seas, they're being forced to go out and look for a new homeland. Um, the salt water inundates their freshwater sources and their gardening land. And so when we went there, um, the clan chiefs from the island had selected a group of their strongest young leaders to go out and essentially f start paving the way for the relocation to this much larger mountainous island 50 miles across the open ocean. And has it been successful? It's a very, very slow process. Um, a big part of the challenge in relocating is Bougainville, where they're moving to, went through a 10-year civil war and war of independence uh, with mainland Papua New Guinea, or what they call mainland Papua New Guinea. And so there are a lot of communities that are still impacted by the civil war. So they still have, some communities still have guns within the communities and um, problems with substance abuse. And, and the Carteret Islands, were not impacted by the Civil War. And so they're negotiating a very, um, a, 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 in a very sophisticated way, they're negotiating this move. Um, but there are only two families that have moved so far and eight more that are looking at moving uh, in the next couple of months. So Kirk, how long were you with them? Oh, Tim. Tim, I'm sorry. Tim. Sorry. I beg your pardon. Um, we were Ooh. filming with, with them for six and a half weeks. And you gonna, are you going to follow it up again, or is, is it a closed book now? There's a chance for a follow-up, but really the, the islanders are writing their own story now. So um, we'll see what happens. It in must be very difficult years. to film. I mean, how did you communicate? Uh, well, um, a few of the islanders, um, Nick and Kathleen, who are, who are our right. main characters and stand out in this clip that you saw, um, did speak a little bit of English, um, and they also spoke Pidgin, which is, of all of the foreign languages, that that's about the easiest to learn. So we picked up um, enough to, s to understand a little bit in a few weeks. I mean, wh what, in your mind, was the most powerful message of the film? What, w what would you want an audience to walk away with from it? A, a couple things. I think um, the film shows the incredible resilience of the Carteret community. And it's a community, they're, qu they're quite remote. They don't have electricity, running water. There's no airstrip, there are no automobiles. But they're showing incredible resilience. They are, in a lot of ways, they're pioneering a model of relocation. And they're moving 2,500 people, but there is something like uh, up to 50 million to 250 million people that could be displaced by climate change. And there are a lot of people within the region who are going through are looking at similar circumstances and they're following their relocation process. So we hope that people take away from the film the, the resilience of the community and also the incredible generosity that's shown in Bougainville. They're, they're negotiating for land in a, <clears throat> in a very difficult place, but they're also shown great generosity from the community there.